So in 2022, General Motors is moving full speed ahead on an all-electric future. We started the year at CES with the debut of our first ever Silverado EV and our transition from automaker to platform innovator. And then more recently, we announced a multi-billion dollar investment that demonstrates the important role manufacturing and our skilled workforce play in GM's aggressive growth strategy. Now, let's speak with none other than General Motors Chair and CEO, Mary Barra, to learn more about our ambition to electrify everything. Welcome, Mary, uh, to the Competitive Advantage, and thanks for joining us today. We're off to a really fast start in 2022 with all the announcements that have come out, your keynote speech at uh, CES, of course, our recent 2021 earnings uh, report out, and then the largest single manufacturing investment in GM history. Let's start out with some questions. How are you feeling about uh, CES, and what's the news that excited you most in your CES uh, uh, announcements? So, Gerald, I think CES was great because it was an opportunity for us to really share our comprehensive strategy on how we are transforming the company as the industry transforms. And as you know, our plan is to lead this transformation. So whether it was Altium and the exciting electric vehicles like the Silverado EV or the Equinox EV or the Blazer EV that we talked about, uh, what we can do with Altify to actually make your vehicle better as you move forward in the ownership experience to autonomous and also as early as mid-decade, a personal autonomous vehicle. So this is one of the most exciting times. And I think CES was a great opportunity for everybody to better understand our strategy. Good to agree more. And we were just in Lansing together where we announced a $7 billion investment aimed at accelerating our vehicle production of EVs in Michigan. And again, one of the largest investments of our company history. Mary, when you think about that investment, what are you challenging or expecting us in manufacturing to get done? Well, obviously, a lot of work has to happen in manufacturing because what we're seeing is just strong interest in EVs. And we have a truck franchise right now with the GMC Sierra and the Chevrolet Silverado, and we're not going to see that to anyone. So from a manufacturing perspective, we need to make sure that we can accelerate our plans, get these plants transformed, and be building the EV trucks that we need to win in the marketplace. But I'm very confident that the manufacturing team will get this done. So in all this, Mary, uh, are you surprised at the acceleration of EV consideration in the market and our forecast? You know, I, I think what we saw starting actually in 20 and 21 was truly a tipping point. And I never thought it was going to be a linear adaption, but I think um, largely because, you know, there's exciting products like the Hummer and like the Cadillac Lyric that, uh, you know, we're already talking about. And people are starting to ride EVs and understand they're not giving anything up. And there's a lot to get from transitioning to an EV. So I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm frankly, I'm more excited because I think this is a huge growth opportunity for General Motors. And so oftentimes we talk about the big investments, the billion dollar investments, but we've made incremental uh, smaller investments. For example, we announced in our Lockport investments of $154 million. Why is that important to the growth strategy as well? Well, I think it's, it's important because we're not only uh, continuing to provide internal combustion vehicles into the marketplace, but we're preparing our strategy to also have future EV components. And so, you know, what we did in Lockport, I think, is, is really important because it shows the workforce that they're a part of this EV transformation. And, you know, we truly want to bring everybody along as we convert and transform the company to an electric vehicle company. And even on that point, so we talked about bringing our employees and bringing our communities along in this transformation. Why is that important to you? Well, I'm very proud of the number of jobs that we provide and making sure that we leverage our facilities, that we provide opportunities for our manufacturing team across the country and across the globe, I think is very, very important. And I view them as a competitive advantage. So being able to um, transition and grow the company will be good for everyone. And I think uh, especially from a manufacturing perspective. In addition to that, how do you see this and these announcements, these investments are impacting the communities where we where we do business? Well, of course, uh, where we have facilities, we're an important jobs creator in those communities. 
And so to continue to have that stability, I think is very important to not only our, our workforce, but to the local communities that count on those jobs, the, you know, the tax revenue, and also the business that it drives. So, you know, we really want to work hard to support the communities in, in which we live and work. And I think making these investments to keep our facilities uh, growing and, and vibrant is, is very important for the community. Amid all this change, what's your message to the, the team members that are working for us across General Motors? Well, let me start with a message to the manufacturing team and the, the you know the team that works in our warehouses and works in our labs. Uh, you know, it's a message of thank you. I know the last two years have been exceptionally difficult as we faced COVID and then we faced semiconductor shortages. And uh, you know what the team has been able to accomplish of following the safety protocols so we can create a safe environment for everybody to do their work. Remember, if we don't make components and vehicles, we don't have a company. So, you know, the discipline that everybody has shown and then the creativity and the scheming and the ingenuity to find solutions uh, across all of the challenges we face has just been something that has made me so proud of, of the General Motors team. And, you know, we see great work going on as in, you know, the design and engineering world as well, where they have accelerated our EV program. So, you know, working together, um, the GM team, I believe, is unstoppable. So if I could uh, shift a little deeper into our technology, uh, from an autonomous standpoint, where some would have thought it was just a pipe dream, it seems like it's becoming a reality. I saw a video of you actually riding around San Francisco in, in an autonomous vehicle. Tell, tell us about that experience and how do you think autonomous affects our society? Well, I think it's significant. And after having that opportunity to ride in a cruise vehicle, I am more convinced than ever that this technology is available and we'll continue to develop it and grow it. When I was riding in the vehicle, it was so capable and so confident. It drives like, you know, the best driver you've ever had a ride with. And when you think about the technology, it's using radar and LIDAR and cameras, fusing those sensors together to create a very safe path for the vehicle to go and therefore a safe ride. So when we think about a world with zero crashes, zero emissions, zero congestion, I mean, autonomous vehicles, especially rideshare, get out all three of those. They're safer. All of our autonomous vehicles are all electric, so they're zero emission. And think about what happens when you don't have to worry about where you park. When you look at the congestion in cities today, autonomous vehicles, rideshare and delivery, I think will dramatically change uh, congestion in cities. So I couldn't be more excited and proud of what the cruise team, working with the GM team, what they've accomplished. I have to agree. It's an exciting time. So if I could ask you in your, let's just say, short career at, at General <laughs> Motors, uh, what would you ever have envisioned when you started out where we are today as an industry and even as a company? No, I, I have to tell you, I, I can't um, say I imagined this back in 1980 when I started at General Motors Institute at Kettering University, or even as I took this role, you know, eight years ago. The amount of progress that we have made on our journey to a world with zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion, the pace of it and the talent of the team executing it has far surpassed my expectations. And again, that's why I really believe that this is our moment for General Motors. and. Uh, I'm looking forward to what 22 brings. And then as we move forward on our journey to get to a million um, EVs by uh, 2025 in the U.S. and in China, um, this is the most exciting time of my career. Thanks so much for joining us on the Competitive Advantage. I really appreciate you taking time to answer our questions and give us a little insight to our journey. Yeah, thanks for letting me be a part of Competitive Advantage. So um, I hope uh, I hope we continue to make sure all of our employees understand the exciting journey that we're on.